What if I told you that all I used in that demonstration was just four pedals? That's right, four pedals. And I will reveal to you what those four pedals are right now. Well, hello everyone, it's Jemma McTavay here. I just want to say thank you so much for tuning into this video. I really, really do appreciate it. And if you don't know who I am, let me give you a little introduction of who I am and what I do. My name is Jemma McTavay, but you can just call me Jem. And I am a session touring musician, a music director, and a music producer all the way here from Sydney, Australia. And my main instrument that I specialize in is the guitar, whether it's electric or acoustic guitar, bass guitar. And I really do take pride in getting great guitar tones, whether I'm playing a pop gig, a rock gig, a blues gig, or whether I'm playing in church, I do take pride in taking the time to craft my sounds and craft my skill set on how to achieve those sounds that I'm looking for. I'm making this video tailored towards church musicians, but this can apply to any guitarist in general. And the reason why I want to target these church musicians and church guitar players particularly is because I frequently get most of my questions coming from church musicians. There's a good reason why a lot of church guitarists ask me questions or are always looking for ways to get a better guitar sound. Most of the time, church musicians are volunteers who have such a big heart to serve their church and to serve God. Most of the time, they're not going to church to play music in general, but when they do play music, it's a very big privilege and they just want to find ways to get better. They want to know how to play better. They want to know how to sound better because most of them are, are, like I said, they're volunteers. They're not really professional musicians. But most of the time, the trend nowadays is like big pedal boards and expensive guitars and expensive amps, uh, which are amazing. Um, but people think that those are the keys to get a great guitar sound in church. And I'm going to tell you right now that no, it really isn't. A lot of the time, the guitarists who are using, you know, these big rigs are either they've been influenced by other people to get these kind of rigs with a with a, like a Vox or a Matchless and like, a, I don't know, a Duesenberg, Gretsch, Veritas, some expensive boutique telly. And that's all great and dandy. And yes, you know, some types of equipment do sound better than others. And most of the time, the more expensive a piece of gear is, it is better than something that's, you know, affordable. But it doesn't mean that the person behind the expensive gear can actually bring out the best sound out of what the equipment they have. I've seen a bunch of videos of worship guitar players who have this expensive matchless amp rig with an expensive guitar and like a giant pedal board with every boutique brand of pedal that you can name and they sound like absolute hot garbage and the reason why is because they just don't have a good foundation of how to get a great guitar sound the intonation when they play is off the way they attack the strings is not great their vibrato is not great and overall their tone in their hands which is the most important part is is not great because they, they have lack of technique but they have a lot of money to splurge on expensive equipment and then you know they they buy and sell gear to try and get that great sound but in reality it's it mainly comes from your hands and your ears. So what I want to share with you guys is just the concepts of how I get my guitar sound when I play in church. And I can apply this to any kind of musical genre I get thrown in in my professional world. So for me, I don't really have a giant pedal board with the most boutique brands. I've got boutique brands on my, my main pedal board, but like I don't use a ton of pedals to actually get the core sounds I'm going for. When I'm playing in church, there's actually four sounds I'm, I'm using and hence why I'm showing you a demonstration of what are the four sounds I'm using. And a lot of the time, it really just comes down to the foundation of my sound and the core of the sound, which is a great guitar with the pickups that I like and a really good sounding amp sound. Whether I'm using my actual amps or I'm using an amp modeler, that is the foundation to my sound of how I get it to work with my hands and what I'm hearing in my head and how to achieve the sound I'm going for, no matter what musical genre I'm in. Let me show you the demonstration I use into getting my church sounds with just four pedals. And I'm going to even switch it up by throwing different pedals in and showing you how I craft my overdrive sounds, my delay sounds, my reverb sounds, and muck around using a, a non-worship style guitar and a, an amp that's not as common to be used in church and still get a great praise and worship tone. I believe that this can benefit 
any kind of guitar player that's playing in church, whether you're a beginner or someone that's advanced. Maybe a lot of people just need to be taken back to the basics in order to get a great guitar sound. All right, so let me explain how I build my chord tones for playing praise and worship at church. First thing that I'm going to think about is I actually need to think about the style of music that we're playing. Most of praise and worship music that is played most of the time is actually more rock pop orientated. Um, a lot of the sounds are actually more rock sounds, not say heavy rock or like metal, but they are more leaning towards rock oriented sounds. So the pedals I'm going to choose in relation to praise and worship sounds, uh, my, my core sounds are actually going to be something that's more rock driven. So my gain sounds are going to be a little more gritty and, and punchy. Uh, my delays are going to be present and my reverbs are going to be present, but they're not going to be overwhelming to the point where my mixes is gone. But when it comes to building my chord tones, it starts with three foundational concepts for me. It starts off by getting a guitar that feels and plays great and sounds great by getting good pickups. Yes, there is a thing called bad pickups out there and it will drastically change this overall sound of your guitar and your overall sound in general. Getting the sound right straight from the source is so important. And the most important part is making sure that the guitar feels good to you. If the guitar doesn't feel good to you, you're going to have a hard time playing it and you're going to have a hard time expressing yourself musically through what you play. And second is a great sounding amp tone. Nowadays, there's so many different options to get great amp sounds, whether you're using a real tube amp, which I still love to this day, whether you're using a modeler like a Stomp, Iridium, ACS-1, Fractal, or if you're using something like a Boss Katana, these things sound awesome nowadays. There are so many options to get a great, there are so many options these days to get a great amp tone. And no matter what amp circuit you choose, whether it's a Fender style, a Vox style, a Marshall style, make sure that it's something that is dynamic and you can get a lot of clarity and character out of your amp. Most of my tones that I'm going to be using are like Vox inspired tones because those are the amps that I really like and make up my sound. But I'm going to totally change the amp tone I'm using with the stomp that I'm using. This, What I'm using the stomp for is primarily for amps, not really effects. Uh, and I'm, I'll change it to a Fender and I'll change my guitar to something uncommon like an Ibanez to show you how I can still get a great church sound by these two things but but the most important foundational thing to get a great guitar tone for church and for music in general is your hands your technique your touch your dy your dynamics the tone the term tone is in the hands is really true because like i said i've seen people with thousand multi thousand dollar rigs only for it to sound like i don't know a line six pod if you're pl if you struggle to hold the strings when you strum or your intonations off when you strum and you're over pressing the strings or you're over bending there's just some things you need to work on to get a good sound out of your guitar there's no point about getting a really expensive guitar if you haven't worked on your strumming dynamics if you haven't worked on your pick attack if you haven't worked on your intonation in your hands if you haven't worked on how hard to press the strings how hard to strum the guitar how to understand how your pickups work from getting a warm i don't know bluesy bluesy tone to like a funky middle position tone to like a rockin' bridge pickup or even a country twanging tone. Those are some things that you need to work on to get the best out of your guitar sound. It really is in the hands. So what I'm gonna demonstrate later is I'm gonna change my amp tone of the Stomp to something like a Fender Deluxe and I'm gonna change out my Tele to an Ibanez because you don't need a boutique Tele or a Gretsch or a Duesenberg or some other fancy expensive guitar to get a great sound for church. You can use what you have to the best of your ability to get a great tone for praise and worship and just guitar in general. Now what you just heard what I just played very briefly is that is my core sound. My hands, my guitar, getting the different sounds just by my pick attack, my pickup choice and my amp choice. When I got those things down, everything that I add on top of it will be solidified. My drive choices, my delay, my reverb for church, like the amp and the guitar is a foundational source for me to sound great. Having 
my sound dialed in with my guitar, with the right pickups, the right feeling guitar, and my amp, the right circuit for me, the the way that it it blends with my my style of play. I can literally play anything with this. I can play nice and soft jangly stuff. <laughs> to something more expressive and dynamic with the strumming. To something a little more percussive and dynamic. So when you think about your guitar sound, don't think of it just genre specific. Think about it as an overall holistic approach that you can get a great tone out of a great guitar and a great amp that can be used for any kind of music. And especially playing in worship, it's, it's a very dynamic thing. There's a lot of textures and a lot of layers, but the, the source of it really comes down to the way you play the guitar, the way that the guitar and the amp sounds in the relation to it. So if you want to improve your guitar sound, Make sure you find the guitar that feels right for you, get better sounding pickups if you feel like the pickups need to be changed, only if it needs to be changed, needs to be. It doesn't have to be. If it already sounds great out of the gate, don't change anything. And then make sure that your amp source is, is better. Uh, there, there are bad sounding amps out there, there are bad sounding amp models out there, or maybe your amp model that you have, that, or maybe your amp model that you're using hasn't been tweaked yet, or maybe you don't understand what a good amp tone is yet, I, I, I highly suggest that you find somewhere where you can try out different amps, different amp models. If you could try out a tube amp first, that would be so much better because the way that your guitar interacts with the tube amp is very, very interesting. Like there's a complete feel to it that needs to be understood. So that way, if you were to try to get a modeler to model a certain type of amp, understanding how it reacts to the way you play and the guitars that you play is so important. Now, let me talk about my pedal choices. So now that I've got my good guitar sound and my amps, I need to make sure that the pedals I choose helps enhance what I already have from my hands to my amp. The pedals I'm using currently on this board are literally just four pedals. I'm saying four because my signature drive-through pedal is a two-in-one. So I've got one side which is very transparent. It's very, and what I mean by transparent is it doesn't really alter the tone of your amplifier and guitar. It doesn't add any different kind of frequencies. It doesn't accentuate any mid ranges. It doesn't en enhance any low end. It doesn't sound harsh on the treble frequencies. And I'll explain. So here's my, my, my clean sound. <laughs> And here's the drive through in the orange section. Now, I'm not scared to use quite a bit of gain. There's not a lot of gain on this. It's like way, way below half, halfway. This is only probably around like nine or eight o'clock. But what I do is I adjust the gain just by my hand dynamics, right? So I can make it sound gritty. <laughs> And then I can switch pickups and lighten the attack of my string to get a more cleaner sound. Same pedal, it's still on, I just change the attack of my strings. And change my pickups. Now I go to the bridge pickup which is more hotter and strum it harder. So you should pick up again. Back to the bridge pickup. I'll lighten my attack on the bridge pickup too. So in the context of playing church, a lot of the tones are very clear and articulate. So you want to make sure that if you're going for that sound, you choose a pedal that can get you a clear and articulate transparent type of tone. And there's so many options out there. It's literally the most buzzword thing in guitar, transparent, like a transparent overdrive. 
Now, I usually like to have a second overdrive with me because having two gain stages is very important because you can have one overdrive set very light and then the other overdrive set a little more thicker so that for bigger sections of songs, you have something to give you more sustain, more punch in your sound, it helps you cut through the mix. And also, you can add a third gain stage by just stacking your transparent overdrive on it or whatever overdrive of your choice to give you a bigger sound for either bigger rhythms or even more leads. So here's what my second overdrive sound sounds like. So here's my clean sound. Here's drive number two. More thicker, but it's still dynamic. If I lighten my attack and change my pickups. Harder attack. It's a great tone. That's literally just one overdrive on amp guitar great sound just because of the foundation is set right and then if i were to stack the two overdrives together this is what i get and if i just played the same god uh just with these pedals alone like i did in the opening demonstration here's what my sound would be like and I lighten my attack, both overdrives are still on. So that's kind of like my main choice of what I go for when I'm going for an overdrive. I like to have a transparent overdrive, a more media overdrive. It could be something like this drive-through or something like a Tube Screamer, or like a Marshall type overdrive. And I usually like to have another boost on me, or like a mid-range boost pedal like a Tube Screamer to help me cut through the mix, but when you're creating your core tones, you don't really need to think about it. Just think of two drive sounds that are workable, that can stack well, that sound great with your amp and your guitar, and you can do so many things. Like I can leave my transparent overdrive on and play so many different other genres, like I can play funk. <laughs> I can play blues. And all sorts of things. But in the context of praise and worship music in church, like these are the drives that you can use that are so suitable for the musical application, especially in a very dense mix with so many things going on, so many different kinds of layers. So that's my concepts and philosophy when it goes to choosing drives. Now, next up is my wet section, starting off with my delay. I usually like to run a, a digital delay. I love the sound of a Boss delay or a Line 6 delay or a TC Electronic delay. And you don't need the most expensive delay to get the delay sound you're going for. Most of the time, the delay sounds that are used in church are either a dotted eighth, a quarter note, or a mixture of dotted eighth and quarter notes. Occasionally, they'll use a triplet delay here and there to make things sound fancier, especially when stacking delays and rhythms, but we'll get to that. I'll show you what I'm going for when I go for a delay. I like a delay that's got tab tempo, so it can go with the, the tempo of the song, or either from the drums or the click. And it's got a simple mix control and simple subdivision control. So I've got a sound where I can go for my dotted eighth rhythmic delays. <laughs> I can go for something like my quarter note delays for more straight rhythm beats that don't require a lot of rhythmic swinging. I can just go straight with them. And 
those are kind of like the two main delays that I use for when I'm playing praise and worship in church. If I'm going for like a more 6-8 song, that I'll probably use like a quarter note delay most of the time. Three, four, five, six. That way it keeps the delay going but it doesn't get in the way of my picking compared to like a dotted eighth where it's very prominent in the mix. It, well, more prominent in the way that the delay reacts to your playing. Now, one of the things that I like to do to make my delay sound sound nice and clear is playing around with the effect control and the feedback. The more delay that I'm gonna have, the, the more that it's gonna af affect how muddy my guitar is gonna sound. If I have too much delay, the delay is gonna overwhelm my dry sound. I don't want my delay to overpower my natural guitar sound in my attack. I want it to keep it nice and even. Or make it even quieter depending on the application I'm using for. See how it's still there but it's not overpowering my attack? But when I'm playing dotted 8 songs, I would like to make my delays a little more prominent in the mix. Whereas if I'm using something like a quarter note analog delay, for example, like right here on the stomp, I don't want my delay to be so prominent in the mix. I actually want it to hide in the background so that I still get space and decay from the delay, but it doesn't get in the way of my playing. Especially when you've got like a big band thing going on, you want to make sure that your, your guitar doesn't sound too dry, but you still want it to have some nice space and ambience, but without it getting too in the way. Um, so if I, if I play stuff like... Hear how the delay is still there, it's, it's, it's prominent but it's not overwhelming my attack. And the most common delay that I actually use when I'm playing in Praise and Worship is, is, is the dotted eighth quarter note delay. Now understanding your delay subdivisions is very very important because they will change the way you rhythmically play. If you use a wrong delay for a different rhythmic part, if you use the wrong delay for a rhythmic pattern that is not suited to the drum beat or to the song, your delay is going to sound completely whack and it's not going to sound nice and it's not going to feel nice either. The reason why I like using the dotted eighth and quarter note delay most of the time is because I can get that rhythmic sound and bounce that I get from the dotted eighth delay and I can also get that behind the scenes type in the background delay from a quarter note but having these two delays galloping with each other I can use it for pretty much almost any type of rhythmic part because I've combined the two and it actually doesn't get in the way of my picking if I adjust the mix and the feedback right. So here's my current dotted eighth quarter note setting right now. If I slow it down, it's there in the mix, but it doesn't get in the way of my attack. And for some reason, this this delay pattern stacked together, it just works so well. So if you want to think about getting different kinds of delays in your setup, or sticking with a certain delay, having a delay where you can switch to different subdivisions is so, so very important because they can change the way that you rhythmically play. And once again, just adjust your mix and your feedback accordingly. Now, when it comes to my reverbs, Reverb is a very, very interesting thing. It's, it's, a, it's a very delicate 
type of effect and if you're not careful with it you can get so easily lost in the mix a lot of people think like the more reverb you have the more ambient it's going to be but yes that is true it also makes your guitar like lost in the mix because the more effect level you have the more your your attack is going to be gone and the more further away your guitar is going to sound and the more you're going to get drowned out in the mix the more reverb you have like the low end is gone the high end is gone compared to if I keep a healthy balance it's gonna sound fantastic so a lot of people when they ask me about my guitar tone is how do I make my guitar sound so huge but at the same time it's still washy and ambient and it's it's still prominent in the mix that my reverb is there. Well what I like to do is I want to make sure that I have my effect level set in a way where I can still hear my reverb and my attack is still there and I, I, I like to also play around with the tone control. Having a very bright sounding reverb can can like can really kill my tone especially if I'm using something like an RV5 where there's a modulated reverb and the high-end shimmer thing or not a shimmer but like that, that high-end uh, decay can get a little too bright so let me max out the RV5 the, the tone on it you hear that you don't want that I want to make sure that I darken it up a little so where it's still prominent that the high end is there but it's not killing my ear. My, my pick attack is there, the low end's there, the high end's there, all my frequencies are there, and the reverb is still there, but it's not drowning my overall sound. I'm not sounding like I'm far away. Now combine that with delay. There you go, you've got a big sounding praise and worship sound with just using four pedals. That is my core foundations of how I get my guitar sound for playing in church, especially in the praise and worship type genre, which is really just rock with pop elements. And yeah, that's that's the core of what I look for in a great guitar sound, especially when I'm playing in church or just guitar in general. The foundation, my hands, my guitar that feels good, the pickups sound great, and the right amp for me that has clarity, character, and dynamics. And then all these pedals that I add on top of it is what what adds on to my overall sound coming from my guitar, my hands, and my amp. So you don't need the most expensive type of rig. Let me change out my, my pedals and change my reverb and I'll change my overdrive. I'll leave the delay as it is. And I'll still keep the HX Stomp as an amp, but I'll change out my Vox sound because remember, you don't need a Vox to play in church. I'll change it to using like a Fender Deluxe reverb and yeah, we'll see how we go from there. So I've changed my rig now and I'm going to show you how I'm going to get a great praise and worship sound using this setup. And no, I am not trolling. So yes, I will be using my 25th anniversary Ibanez RG1XXV. I have now changed the amp model from my Vox AC30 into a Fender Deluxe reverb. And this is what my clean tone sounds like with the neck and middle put together. <laughs> So 
So now that my guitar has changed, I've got hotter sounding outputs, I've got a different kind of amp, I need to understand now how my playing dynamics is going to affect the overall sound of that. Now that I know that my humbuckers are going to drive the amp a little harder, it means now on my overdrive, I don't have to put so much gain on. I actually like having the fact that in the context of praise and worship music, which is kind of pretty much rock, I like to have the amp break up ever so slightly when I dig into it. So if I'm playing nice and light, with the neck humbucker for example. Nice and clean, I got a full rich sound. But I could also bring the drive a little down. To accommodate my different kinds of pickups. So now if I throw an overdrive on, on this Midnight Edition I've changed the overdrive so that the green side there's a, uh, a high gain mod on it. So my orange side is still going to be nice and transparent. But my green side is a more gainier and grittier. But if I attack lighter, switch pickups, I still got that nice clarity and jangle that I would get from a more lower type of overdrive just by changing the attack of my hands. And now what I've done is I've changed the reverb out from the Boss RV5 into the TC Electronic Hall of Fame and I'm using the church reverb setting which sounds like this. Nice reverb sound, nothing fancy to it, nothing crazy, but it gets me enough reverb and ambience and space to get the sound that I'm trying to achieve to accommodate for the kinds of reverbs used in praise and worship kind of music, which is, like I said, pop rock. So let's play Same God again, but using this rig and this guitar, this amp, and show you how to get a great praise and worship sound with the rig that I've got.
I just want to say thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you learned something new and if you maybe gained a new concept of how to get a better guitar sound in church, feel free to hit the subscribe button. And if you want to see more of what I do, be sure to check out my website at www.jemmymactivatemusic.com and check out my socials down below. All my socials are using the same username at jemmygems underscore. And if you want to check out my Line 6 Helix and HX Stomp presets, they are available on multitracks.com. I've come out with a new preset pack for this year with the new 3.6 update and they sound absolutely amazing. And if you want to check out my new signature overdrive pedals, the Vanda Guitars drive through go check out the website at www.vandaguitars.com.au. They are the best overdrive pedals I've played, period, and so many people around the world have been loving them and how it's been enhancing their tone in their rigs. So feel free to check them out. It would mean the world to me if you wind up using it in your rig one day. And I just want to say, have a great day and God bless. See you around.